I do think the beginning part of any drawing session has to just be warming up. Those of you guys who do athletics probably know you don't start playing the soccer game. You actually need to just move around, jog around the track. I am so not warmed up right now. And one thing you guys will notice when I approach these multi-figure compositions is that I'm going to draw through the figures, which I know is a little bit weird because then you think, oh, you're going to mess it up. But I find that very important. And so one thing I tell myself when I'm doing these multi-figure compositions is that I have x-ray vision. So give yourselves x-ray vision today to see through the figures, see the connections where the figures cross over each other. Like here, I'm gonna just do this arm right through this figure's back. And yes, I know it's very light. I know you guys can't see, but you gotta do that. <laughs> That's part of starting out a drawing is just being so light that you're barely touching the paper. So let's establish better a uh, landmark like the elbow, landmarks like the kneecaps and some of these tendons. And I am going to do a little bit of work on the ground because I do think it's difficult to make a seated figure if you don't put some sort of figure and ground situation going on. So I am going to think about these more as a composition. In the past, some of these live drawing sessions, I've only just drawn the figure. I haven't really done much else, but that's not going to be the case today. Okay, so I know this is a short pose, but let's still think about that rug of tone that I have talked to you guys about in the past, just to block in some of these larger features so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, let's get the center line in because I didn't do a great job of that to begin with. And it's darker down here. And ooh, look at this, PSIS. <laughs> it's very fun when you find those anatomical landmarks. And I wanna show the, the compression of the backside. There's a really dark shadow back here. So I'm just gonna block that in real fast. Tell me in the chat, are you drawing along with me? And if you're not, can we guilt you into drawing with us? Because sometimes somebody said this in the Discord the other day, they were like, even if it's just five minutes, that still counts for something. And those minutes, they do add up. Okay, let's get in some shoulder action. So I'm going to start to block in. This is the trapezius muscle, a chromium process up here, deltoid moving down, curve of the neck. Again, trapezius, can't really see the acromion process, a little bit hard. But up here, you can see the deltoid muscle. Here's some of the bicep. And then again, another bony landmark here, which is the elbow. So even at this early stage, you guys can start to do some of that. And you know what? I chickened out on the hands. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> so let's get the major shapes of the hands. Here, I'm just going to do a basic form. I do like to distinguish the thumb from the rest of it because the thumb really, I think, is very much in its own universe. And so I'm not going to draw in the fingers, but I am going to find the line of the knuckles, which is about here, and put in a little bit of the wrist. So, oh, that is funky. What did I do? I got two elbows. Okay, I gotta pick one. <laughs> All right, I think it's the lower one. I think it's more around here. Okay, <laughs> this, you just can't count when you're drawing the figure. Okay, let's get in this overlap. And now, because I drew through the back, it's easier for me to place the elbow, which is down here. So even at this early stage, you guys, there is space to be putting in these bony landmarks. Let's get this a little bit bolder, maybe a little bit more shadow down here. And this I'm really going to plug in a little bit more dramatically. So even up here, I know that this is like a big blob of hair at the top. It's actually really hard to see, but I am going to show a little bit the direction of the hair. That's what you're looking at with hair. Just look at big clumps see how it works. And I'm not working on this figure enough. So I'm going to get in the cheekbone, a little bit of the jawbone, maybe the hairline. In a drawing like this, you're not going to have time to do the facial features. So I just put in 
the basic forms, maybe a little bit of the eye sockets, maybe the nasal bone, little bit of the cheekbone up here, but that might be as far as I choose to get in that area. And that's totally fine. You know, I lost my chromium process. Let's put that back. And you know what? I've ignored this area. So let's get down here. You got to remind yourself, jump around that page. Okay. Don't just stay in one area for too long because then you start emphasizing areas that make it hard for you to create, I think, a fluid motion. Okay. This is really hard to see. This is this area here is all like in darkness. So I'm going to do a little bit of guessing down here, look up some of the shadows. And then tone wise, this really is quite dark. And then this is pretty dark. Yeah, the whole hand area is dark. So a big rugged tone here, a little bit on the bottom on this side, use that side of your crayon or whatever it is you're drawing with to bulk in those areas. Okay, and then here's the seven cervical vertebrae. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Yay, <laughs> there it is. Can't really see, I guess there's a little touch of scapula here. It's really hard to see in the photo. And you know what, now I lost my hands. So let's bring those back in here. Think about your drawing as layers. It's sort of similar to painting in a way that you build the layers up. So you take something away, you put it back, you take it away again, you resurrect it, you kill it. It's a roller coaster ride. That's what drawing is really all about. Okay, I'm gonna emphasize more the vertebrae back here and show the overlap of this form. So does everybody see here? This is a little bit hard to see, but do you see how I drew this form in front of this form? So you're looking for areas that overlap. Where do the forms show that one form is in front of another? Like here, there's sort of an overlap coming down, a little bit more here on the elbow. See, I think I made this way too wide. So I'm gonna go in, trim that a little bit. Here's where you start to make a lot of adjustments. And guys, keep adjusting your drawings. Don't settle for less. Really easy to draw something once and call it a day, but don't do that, okay? Make those fixes however you want to do it. Here's another bony area, this section by the wrist. And here I am going to draw the finger because the finger, this one especially, is sort of going off in its own pace <laughs> because it's a rebel or something like that. And I do want to fix the edge of this hand because I did lose it in the process. And that thumb is way too big. So let's cut back on that. Maybe a little indication of the fingers. It's hard because this whole area is really dark. There's not a lot of information there for me to work with. Let's really walk up this, get the direction of that going, maybe a little bit more of a distinction between this head and that head so I can see that a little bit better. And lock this in like that. And if you guys are drawing along with me, tag us art.prof on Instagram. And you can also use hashtag artprofshare. That way you make sure that we actually see it because if you don't do that, we don't necessarily see it. So make sure that happens. Okay, this hand got, these hands are screwing with me. <laughs> they're a pain in the butt. I love drawing hands, but when they're on a small scale, they, they are a pain to draw. I feel like when they're bigger and we will do at some point a stream on drawing hands. I'll see if I can fit it in before my big move because uh, things are going to get crazy probably end of July. So I won't be able to do as many live drawing streams, but don't worry. I'm going to keep you guys very much up to date. Okay. Think I am out of time. So let me take a quick break, look at what's going on in the chat and then I'll do another drawing. Okay. So we're going to go back to this scene. I'm going to pull myself up and take a look at what's going on. All right. What are people saying today? Wow, we got a lot of people in the chat. Wonderful. Jim Lin is saying, use your x-ray vision to establish the head and spine first. Good. Awesome. And Mariana's drawing a portrait while listening. Cool. Yeah, a lot of you guys have told me that you use us almost like as a podcast. And I am thinking about 
trying to upload some audio recording somewhere. Cause I know the problem with the YouTube app is that you can't navigate to another app while you're doing it. So we're going to try to see if we can do something about that. I mean, might have to wait till after I move, but we'll see what's going on. BV is drawing along. We'll post in the discord later. Yep. If you guys are in the discord, there is a channel called post live streams. And it's so fun when you guys come into the Discord, show me what you made with the draw along. And it's really, really fun. So hope you guys will join the Discord. Link is in the video description below. BV just got 200 feet of paper, 10 yards of Strathmore. Ooh, that sounds good. I need to do that too, because I'm actually running a little bit low. And Jay Leaf says, I drew along, but was so unprepared, so nearly had a heart attack trying to get my art supplies together. <laughs> and don't worry, my drawing streams, I have realized I can't make them an hour. It's too short. It's not enough time for me to really get into the mindset. So I would assume probably that these are going to be at least an hour, if not longer than that. So anyway, Aya is saying, what is she using? So what I'm using, Adya, sorry, I'm using Karen Dash Neo Color One Crowns, and you can get them in any color. The main thing about them is that they don't smudge, and also that I don't get tempted by erasing everything to death. Right now I'm using run-of-the-mill drawing paper, but on my last drawing, I'm going to switch to charcoal paper so I get that awesome texture that I'm so obsessed with. Allison says, I got mixed media paper and gouache, made a Coptic stitch sketchbook with you and Eloise's tutorial video. Very cool. Well, I hope you'll post it on Instagram, Allison. Then we can share it with the community because people have been making beautiful artist books, which is really, really exciting. Good. We have pressured Darth B into drawing along. And Tom G says, I'm going too dark. The shadows swallow everything. Yeah, what you really have to do is stay lighter for longer. That's almost an insurance policy that you're taking out on your drawing because if you dive in too fast, it can get very dark without you having any control over that. So I'd rather stay lighter longer and have the drawing look super crappy for longer <laughs> to dive in and really regret it later on. Okay, guys, let's do, how about a 15 minute pose? So let me switch the timer, 15 minutes. And let's switch the image. So I need to get to the next one, which is another Laura Aguilar photo. And by the way, if you want links to the anatomy tutorials that I'm showing you guys here, the photographer's names, everything is in the video description below. So you can check that out. Okay, so let me move on. I gotta get back to my drawing scenes and we'll talk about what's going on next. Let me just flip to the next scene. Here we go. Okay, so let's get rid of this drawing like that. Okay, we're gonna do 15 minutes. Let me switch to the Laura Aguilar image. This is such a strange image. And I really like that this drawing has a background to it. So you know what, actually, let's do 20 minutes because I feel like because it is a rather complicated background, I'm gonna need a little bit of, oh, not 20 hours. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am not gonna draw for 20 hours, trust me. Okay, so let's start with this. There we go, getting my crayon. Now this gets a lot more complicated because if you guys look at this scene, there's three figures and they're spread out. So we have to really map this out as a figure composition. So look at this guys, this is what we're gonna do. We're not gonna draw figure by figure. That is not a good idea. When you wanna do a multi-figure composition, you have to think about the group of figures as a mass. Okay, so let's try that. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna block in the major masses of this figure on the left. Like here's the torso and the center line of this figure. And then this figure, the torso sort of tilts. And here's the center line. And then the legs really come down like this. So this is really different 
than what you guys have seen me do in the past. And I know you can't see anything too bad because you got to start light. <laughs> and also look at the scale shift, this figure in the background, way smaller than this figure. So this figure is this large. Okay. So let's go in and make this figure a little bit bigger. And the kneecaps, I really underestimated the scale of them and also the feet. So let's put the feet a little bit more dramatic down here. And then I do want to show the tilt of her head because that's a little bit tricky. And let's get the arm in there. So these multi-figure compositions, oh my God, they're so much more complicated. Like you really have to jump around. So what I'm seeing a lot, especially in the Discord, I know, sorry, I can't jump in there as much as I'd like to in terms of the critiques. But one thing I am seeing a lot of people doing is drawing the figure, finishing it, and then saying, what do I do with the background? Well, <laughs> the answer is you should have done it a long time ago. So watch what I'm going to do now, okay? We have this hand, and there's this like big rock formation down here. And I'm going to do like a little pocket of tone. And then by here, there's another bigger rock and a little bit of shadow. So the way you guys have to approach this, you have to think very abstractly. Right now, if you guys are looking at my drawing, you'll see it looks like nothing. It's like, what are you doing, Clara? Like, <laughs> who knows? But look at this, like I'm popping in the shadow back here of this figure. I'm showing the negative space like this. And so this may feel extremely chaotic to you, but this is how you map out a space. That's what happens with a multi-figure composition. Okay, so now what you start to do is you start to prioritize some of the limbs that really jump out. So to me, her center line is probably here and this arm is a pretty dramatic part of this pose. So I'm gonna get in there and you guys will see, I am drawing a little slower because it's so complicated. There's so many pieces to this image that I feel like I can't draw as hastily as I normally do, because I really feel like right now I'm not drawing as much as I am mapping. I'm mapping out the space and I'm trying to find those relationships. So like here, there's a very dark shadow. And so you're tackling not just the figure, but also the space around the figures. And let's see, let's get in the heel. Okay. Does everybody see how different this is? The mapping out of it. It's no longer the same situation as what you guys normally see me do. And I'm gonna keep it real loose for a very long time. See, now I gotta move over to this figure. Here's like the hair. This hair has a very dramatic diagonal to it. And up here, I am gonna show the angle of the breasts, which come down like this, and the belly button. Really, really good landmark. I know it doesn't seem that important because it's so tiny, but it, you can use it so well to your advantage to make sure that you're really locating things. Okay, now up here, the shoulder's doing something very weird. Um, this form is a lot larger and I wanna show the overlap, which is here and there's extreme foreshortening on the hand. So this is sort of the bulk of the hand. Now I'm gonna jump up here, okay? So you're all over the place, all right? You guys, the key to this, those of you who may be struggling, this is a lot different than what I've been doing in my other streams, you got to think abstractly. You got to break it down into shapes. Don't tell yourselves I'm drawing an arm. Don't say I'm drawing a leg. Say to yourself, I see a big area of shadow. I see a form that moves in that direction. I'm really just looking at angles right now. I'm not thinking about, oh, this is a breast. This is a shoulder. I'm trying to really see the negative shapes and look at those forms. So let's look at the angle. Here's this compressed area of form. Let's get that in there, a little bit more form here. And there's the thighs. Yeah, this is a challenge, you guys. This is, we're not in the same universe <laughs> that we were before. I mean, it really makes you appreciate people like Jerry Coe and Degas, all those, all those white men who were drawing these really epic compositions. It's not easy to balance, you guys. You're never gonna look at Jerry Coe or any of these artists the same way again. I don't think I really got that tilt so great. And actually, I think I missed out on the skin fold. So actually this should be that skin fold. We'll put another one here. Okay, and we'll push this down 
like that and I'm really going to bulk in some of this. Tell me in the chat, is this hard? <laughs> Tell me if you're having a hard time because if you are, that's exactly what you should be doing. This is really hard, guys. Not easy to map it out in this way. Okay, this figure really should be bigger. So what I'm going to do is maybe get this hand more dramatic. Let's get the thumb and then the, the angle of the uh, knuckles comes down here. And you know what? I think I am going to have to move the legs down. I think I made them too short. So let's bring the ankles down to here, which brings the leg down to here. Sorry. I know you guys can't see some of this. Maybe I'll move it up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then we're going to put this foot all the way down here. Okay. And then lean this leg here. And if you're having a hard time, tell the other people in the chat what you're struggling with. I think the key to this is a shift of mindset. You can't tell yourself I'm drawing three female figures in an outdoor setting. You have to tell yourself that I'm looking at shapes. Like here, this is a very strong shape with the hair. And so I'm just going to block this in and a little bit of the chin. I'm just going to pull out the angle of chin. And look at this, the ear right here. Okay. That's the ear and maybe a little bit of the nasal bone. And then let's get this shoulder in better. And actually the breast is bigger than I made it. So let's get the shading in there. You only see a sliver of that arm. I think I put in way too much arm and let's get this compression going. Okay. So this figure is feeling a little bit better. Although ugh, this breast is weird. It, it looks too much like a bean. Okay. Yeah. Breasts are not beans. You guys, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> okay. This, oh my God, this figure's a mess. Okay, hang on. <laughs> we really have to fix this figure. I think this is too high. Yeah, she needs more torso. Okay, so let's move this down. Yeah, that makes sense because I moved that further. And we have to get these skin folds, which are so beautiful. And I'm making them too even. So this one is more like that. This one's really pudgy up at the top. And again, like this is about where you would get the belly button. And here. Okay. And then there's a lot of compression here. You know something? I'm going to put the breasts in first. I feel like the breasts are going to help me. Okay. So th this one is like almost drooping in a way. So you have to sort of show that weight distribution and the nipples will help too, because that's another landmark in a way, same way the, the belly button's a landmark and don't let this arm get all rubbery. You guys, you have to really find the separation. Like this is the lower arm. This is the upper arm, and then that's going to be easier to follow. And then over here, let's get the second breast, and there's like a, a little area of flesh here. Let's make sure I'm getting all this. Okay, this should be darker. Let's make this a little bit more bulgy, a little bit more bulbous. That's sort of a good way to think about a larger figure is how bulgy you want to make it. Give it a little more compression. Okay, and let's pop out some of this. Now I'm ignoring some of the background. That's not good because underneath this breast, there's all this hair and don't draw the strands. You guys just draw like a big chunk. Oh dear. Now there's like no space for her arm. Shoot. <laughs> okay. This, this arm is definitely going to have to go. Okay. Hang on. Th this is the shoulder. So does everybody see how this is not the same thing as the mark making stuff that I typically do. This really is like you're mapping out a city. Like you're trying to place all of the buildings. You're trying to figure out where they belong. And that's very different, I think, than drawing figure by figure. Because the thing about drawing an individual figure, I'm not saying it's easy, but you can focus a little bit more on a single area. And even now I'm feeling like I'm really losing this head. I feel like the head should be like all the way over here. And you know something, this is a 20 minute pose, but I'm not going to get that far in this drawing at all because there's so much mapping that needs to happen. Yeah. So this, okay, let's move this torso up here. This breast comes over here. We're going to move everything around. She's got like four breasts. Okay. Let's move this one up here. And actually the nipples will help me too. So let me place those. Okay. So this arm, whoa. Okay. Let's move this over so you guys can see this better. This arm is all the way over here. I'm going to go a little darker so you can see better. And then 
if this hand is here, then this hand is here. Okay, this is like a domino effect. You guys see how you fix one thing, you gotta fix six other things and that's fine. And this drawing is gonna be a mess for a while, but I'm cool with that, that's fine. Let's get in some more of this rock, just some basic little shapes. So you might be wondering like, why are you bothering with the rocks when your figures need a ton of work? Well, it's to contextualize them. If you guys draw these figures and they're floating in thin air, the suck could get better, it's gonna get harder. And so I think things like popping in these little shadows down here, that's very helpful. Now I'm gonna go back up here, I'm gonna to start to get a little more aggressive because I want this figure to pop a little bit more. I'm gonna get darker down here. So this figure is starting to come out. I'm not happy with this whole area. This is really a mess. But you know what, let your drawing be a mess. It's okay, you guys. You don't have to knock it out of the park all the time. I think a lot of people have very unrealistic expectations that it's like, oh, I got hit a bullseye. The very first arrow I shoot, it's got to be a bullseye. Okay, that's not true, guys. Not at all. You, you got to give yourself time to mess up. Give yourself time to make a mess. Because to me, this is still warming up. Like I am not 100% there yet. I'm still trying to get back into the mindset of drawing. It takes time. This is not fast. Oh my God, that head is a disaster. What am I gonna do with that? Okay, what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna look for the jawbone, the mandible. Okay, so if I look at, oh, you know what I need? Okay, here, here is the pit of the neck right there. These are the clavicles. Everybody see the clavicles? They're like really actually very clear on this figure. And then here's the neck, here's the ear. And let's find the jawbone. The jawbone is like here and then the chin moves upwards. It's a really weird angle. But you know what? You guys have to learn how to draw these angles. These angles are really important. And I made that, I make that too small or is this not big enough? You see proportions, it's relationships. How big is this compared to this? Don't just look at this and say, oh, it's too big. You have to look at it in relation to other things. And so what I'm seeing right now, this shoulder is higher than this head and I have them even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this shoulder up a little higher like this. And then there's like this hair down here and I'm gonna pull this jawbone up like this and the eye socket is back here, which then pushes the hair back here. <laughs> so what I'm trying to show you is just, you have to let your drawing be a mess. You really, really have to. And I find it easier to make a mess than to walk on eggshells the whole time. You don't wanna be there with your drawings. You don't wanna feel like you don't wanna upset anybody. That's not a good thing. I think you should be okay upsetting people when it comes to your drawing. Well, mostly it's upsetting yourself. <laughs> it's not really upsetting anybody else. I don't know. Maybe it is, but I can sort of doubt it. Um, yeah, it's it's not as complicated as we... <laughs> I don't know. I, I've talked to a lot of you guys in the Discord about how we really were our own worst enemy. We're so much more critical about ourselves than we are about anybody else. Okay, does everybody see I spent way too much time here. I really should have moved on to this figure and oh God, this figure is a mess. I feel like the breasts, like I have them here, they really should be back here. <laughs> so you know what, let's work on this figure. This is good, it's just avoid all of our problems. <laughs> and I do wanna show the color because I feel that back here, this is all pretty dark. And there are these like patches of rock back here and there's like a, a big patch like that. This figure is a lot brighter than the other ones and there's darker patches up here. And I do think I made this figure not quite wide enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull the breasts up here because really you guys, you're gonna learn more if I mess up. Like if I do it, well, I can't do it perfectly. But in theory, if I could do it perfectly, that doesn't teach you anything. You gotta watch other people mess up. Like actually there's one time, one of my professors who, who's such a like elegant, intelligent person. I mean, he's so cool. But there was one time he was doing a demo in my printmaking class and he totally messed it up. And you know what? That was a good moment for us to see him mess up because he's somebody who does not, well, he has the appearance of never messing up. And I was like, oh good, I'm glad to know you're like a human being 
because it's sort of hard, I think, when you study with people who are almost like too good at what they do. And you know something, what I've really discovered, guys, is that being a good artist doesn't have a lot to do with being a good teacher. They really are two separate skills. There are not a lot of people I know who do both very well. Okay, now, does everybody see here? It's getting really blobby and really messy. But you know something? To me, this area is a little bit reassuring because now I feel like I can pull the form out of that mess. Like up here where it's starting to get very defined and very clear, this actually stresses me out a little bit because I feel like things are starting to get too solidified and I don't have the ambiguity of messing with things. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just block out this whole area and get it really tonal. So this is what I said earlier about like losing your marks and then bringing them back because now I'm gonna start to define the backside a little bit more. We're gonna block in more of these legs so they have a little bit more tone. And the other thing you can do is you can like scan the composition and say, what do I need to bring out? And to me, it's this. This area here underneath the arm is like a really bold dramatic shadow. And I totally have not done that. So what I'm gonna do now is really darken this line because what you want in a figure composition is like a hierarchy of lines. Like you're not gonna draw everything this dark. I'm gonna do that because I feel that that's an important part of the drawing. And then maybe with the uh, thumb, <laughs> yeah, that, that part of the hand. <laughs> Let's pull this out. Have you guys ever noticed that when you have kids, you become stupid? Like this is part of the human experience. Tell me, tell me in the chat if you agree. When you have kids, you become stupid. Like you can't do basic things anymore. <laughs> okay. All right. I only have a little bit of time left, but what I am going to do is start to pull out again the parts that I want to emphasize. So I feel that this kneecap needs a lot of emphasis. So I'm going to really pull this out very dramatically because this is an area to me that is very important. And then this too, this kneecap is also very important. See, I'm throwing you guys for a loop today. You thought you were going to come on and draw figure by figure, but nope. <laughs> Actually, you guys can blame somebody in the Discord. Somebody in the Discord suggested this and I was like, ooh. <laughs> Awesome. And if you guys have suggestions for things you want to see me draw or video topics that you'd like to see us cover, just let us know. Tell us in the Discord. You can always give us a comment here on YouTube because some of the coolest ideas we've gotten have been from all of you. They're not necessarily from us. I mean, yeah, we come up with stuff too, but I think what I want to do is really serve the needs of the community. It's like, what is the information that we can give you that is going to cover some of your needs. Like for example, we did a stream recently on um, making a series of artworks. And that was a suggestion that many people had given us in the past. And it was great because after we did that stream, a lot of people actually said to me, oh wow, that really cleared up a lot of things that I'm wondering about. So please, please tell us what you need in terms of subjects, what to draw, what to do discussion streams on, however you guys want to do that. Okay, I think we're out of time. So what I'm gonna do, let's switch back to my talk scene, see what you guys are doing. I'm very curious because this is so different and way more complicated than what we've done in the past. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scroll up and go to some of the other comments from earlier on. Rainia says, I stopped drawing, it's too hard. Okay, you are gonna feel that way and that's totally normal, but you know what, Rainia? Just make a mess. It's fine. Guys, can we just do this? Can we have a quota of crappy drawings for every person here? Give yourself a quota of 20 crappy drawings, maybe even more than that. And then you just say, I fulfilled my quota. Because you know what, Rainia, you looking and observing this scene is just as important as the drawing itself because so much of drawing is seeing and training your eye. So you may feel that nothing's happening because, oh, the drawing's not very good, but you're training your eye, okay? You cannot sit down and draw and not gain something from that experience. 
Mrs. Warhol says the strong contrast between the dark hair against the pale skin seems like the focal point to me. Yeah, I mean, wherever you see the focal point, I think a lot of people, depending on what they're looking at, how they see the scene, may feel it's somewhere else. And that's fine. I think that's totally cool. Big Hen says sketching out the masses is like doing a Notan sketch to capture not only the forms, but the values too. Cool. And Elijah is starting to set timers because I feel like I have to finish every drawing. Yeah, the timers are really nice because it's a structure that you won't argue with. I think if you don't have a timer, it's really easy to just keep going over and over again. Let's see what else people are saying. BV struggling with the perspective. Okay, so what I would do, you guys, look at scale. Because the figure that was in the background is significantly smaller than the other one. And the foreshortening does not help. I mean, that's why this drawing was so hard because there was so much weird foreshortening in the jaws, but you got to learn how to do that. I mean, people are not going to sit like this <laughs> every single figure drawing that you do. So yeah. Angelic Enigma says so much going on. Yeah. I mean, th this is much more about composition and layout today than it is about individual figures, but it's like, you've got to contextualize your figures. You can't have them floating in white space all the time. So yeah, let's see. Missy, please, says, mine's the most of a mess I've ever done on paper. Good, that's great. That means you're just getting started because we're gonna do other drawings today and they're gonna get a lot longer. Like the next one I'm probably gonna do is like 40 minutes, but that's fine. You should have a mess. If you don't have a mess, you're not doing it right. <laughs> not that it's not right, but that you're probably prioritizing other things like details that don't matter. Togrel says, I recommend beginners to draw not overweight people like this because you can't learn anatomy correctly. Don't feel bad if you can't draw pictures like this. Okay, Togrel, I'm going to disagree with you and say that there is no order that you should learn to draw figures in. I know for a lot of people, they like to have thinner figures like <laughs> these guys <laughs> over here on the right definitely have a lot of definition. But the thing is, you have to learn how to draw different types of people. And I think what's nice about a larger figure is that your mindset shifts. So instead of putting all your emphasis on hot lean muscles, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> instead of focusing on that, you look at mass and you look at form and you look at weight distribution, and those are all elements that are just as important as the acromion process. And so to me, if you avoid drawing figures that maybe the anatomy is not so visible, you're giving yourself tunnel vision in terms of drawing figures. And I'm a firm believer in being a well-rounded artist that you can tackle anything. Because have you guys heard this before where people say things like, I can draw bunnies, but I'm bad at drawing frogs. I'm like, I don't think it works that way. You just draw. It doesn't matter if it's a bunny or if it's a frog. So I would recommend you guys absolutely draw these figures. And yeah, it's freaking hard. And yeah, it's tougher to see the clavicles, but you got to train yourself to learn to do all these things. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. 10,000 Crows says, my problem is I can't find a comfortable position to draw in, so I can't focus. Well, what I do 10,000 Crows, if I'm not in a classroom, I set up two chairs. So I sit in one chair and then I lean my drawing board against another chair. And it's almost like a drawing horse. If you guys have seen a drawing horse before, it's basically that type of setup. So that works out really, really well. Rachel Ferry says, thanks to you, I started testing myself and painting on bigger surfaces. I went to the store, picked out the biggest paper I could find. It's great. I think that's wonderful. You can learn to work at different scales. And it's a problem if you only work at one scale, because again, it's like you're stifling your ability to diversify as an artist. And Jim Lynn is saying, I get bored with one body type. Exactly. Like some of my favorite models that I have worked with have not been that run of the mill size zero thin white female. A lot of people are so much more different than that. And it makes it more interesting. Thank you for the super chat, 10,000 crows. Super chats are always appreciated because I think most of you guys know that we rely entirely on donations and that ArtProf is 100% free. And I was telling some people the other day that I would 
rather, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. Don't worry. <laughs> I'd rather shut it down than charge a paywall because I just don't believe in that. I think everybody should have access to this content. LSDB says larger figures are the best. They are full. They have so much to offer. Sometimes thin people look the same. The next thin model the stand the same. And it's very boring after a while. You know what I think is really hard about a thinner figure? I think arms are really hard. If you have a thin figure, you feel like there's not much to draw, actually. And so I, like Alice is saying, I enjoy drawing those bigger figures because the forms change so much. And so, yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in the different body types. Rachel says, I don't have a live model. Started doing figure drawings of myself from the mirror. Fabulous. That's great, you guys. Get mirrors. And you know something else, Rachel, is if you get two mirrors, you can actually draw your back. I've done that before. I should show you guys in the Discord. I did a lot of drawings in art school of my back. And it was, you know, it takes a little time to figure out the angles of the mirrors, but you can do some really cool stuff that way. And Scott says, I think heavier models are easier. You don't have to worry about shading every single muscle. No offense to Fast Mentor. <laughs> you guys are not, you, if you want to learn something today, you better not bring them up. Because <laughs> it's just like the world stops. <laughs> Plus, I've been I've been watching Jane Eyre for like the past three nights, and he's only in like forty five minutes of the movie because at the end of Jane Eyre, he gets injured and he loses his sight and he stops cutting his hair and he looks terrible. He looks like a caveman. So I just stop at the point where Jane leaves because I'm like, okay, we're done. <laughs> I don't need to watch anything else. Samantha says, "How can I find?" figure subjects without models to draw during the pandemic. I think, Samantha, there's a couple things you can do. You can draw from your family members. I mean, assuming you don't live alone, you can do that. I draw pictures of my daughters at breakfast. It's really, really fun. But honestly, go online and look up nude photographers. Like I was showing images of her Brits is a great one. Robert Maplethorpe. This is Laura Aguilar, Irving Penn we were looking at before. Eugene Darrow is excellent. If you go back and you look at some of our prior live drawing streams, you'll see names of photographers. You can just Google them. I just think it's more tasteful. I don't really like those standard stock model photos. For some reason, they just look tacky and they have terrible lighting. So that's another reason I don't like that. Thank you very much, Mrs. Warhol. And Missy, please really appreciate the super chats. You guys, it's so amazing to me, the support that you give us here at Our Prof. It's really, really nice to hear that. Let's see, Blue Wolf Spirit says, just opened my Karen Dash crayons, promptly broke off a piece to draw. Yep, go ahead and make sure you guys peel the crayon so you're using it as a full piece, okay? All right, so let's get in and we're gonna do another figure composition, but I'm gonna spend more time on it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it up into two 20 minute segments so that I can take a little break and chat with you guys um, in advance. Okay, so let me get back into my drawing position like this. And I'm gonna show you guys the next image. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now to make this a little bit smaller Okay, we have another Laura Aguilar image. And then the final image I'm gonna show you guys is going to be another Irving Penn. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And this is a cool composition because it's almost like rows of figures. And also the contrast and the shadows in this one are a little bit more dramatic. So I'm hopefully that this is gonna be a little bit easier to do. I know this is a challenge, you guys. That's why I'm doing it, because I think that we can't just keep drawing the same thing all the time. Like, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but whenever I look at these other YouTube channels that are teaching figure drawing, I've noticed that they just repeat the same thing over and over again. And you can't do that. You really have to diversify what you're doing. OK, so actually, I got to change. Oh, let's do 20 minutes, because we're going to do 20 minutes, take a break, and then do that. 10,000 crows, thank you very much for the peer pressure. <laughs> That's what. Our prop is all about peer pressuring people to draw. Okay, let's get started with this piece. Okay, there we go. Now I gotta figure out the scale. I know this sounds really weird, you guys, but sometimes it helps me to just 
feel the paper. I know I'm like, feel up the paper, but like, I just want to get a feeling of the sizing of the page. Does that sound really weird? It probably does. Just don't quote me out of context. <laughs> okay. So this figure is quite large compared to the other two. And I'm just going to put out the mass like this and maybe the head is about here. Yeah. Okay. So there's that figure. This one's actually pretty small compared to the figure here and the heads. Everybody see this, this head of the lower figure here and this head is over here. So I'm going to move the head over here. And then this figure is a little bit further to the right and the head is like over. Okay. So here's the landscape. There's like all this shading up here for this like bush. So you might be looking at this and thinking, why are you doing the background? You've got to do the figures. Well, this helps me with the figures because I can look at this shape at the top and approximate the location of this figure in relation to that form. I look at this figure in relation to this form. So already you're thinking big shapes, big shape, big shape, big shape, big shape. Okay. You're not trying to get into that little stuff. Okay. All right. And I'm going to try to be a little bit more gestural. I feel like in the last one, I was getting a little bit tight. So I'm going to see if I can do a better job with that. Okay. So I definitely don't want to lose these feet over here. So what I think I'm going to do is maybe move this figure over a little bit, not too much though, because I definitely need to have space. Okay. The center line is probably about here. And then I want to show the angle of the thighs, like moving up and down this angle here and the stomach is quite large. So we're going to really give it some form. And then everybody see this rock that's underneath this leg. By the way, I love these images by Laura Aguilar. And I hope that you guys are seeing um, that we're trying not to be like Andrew Loomis <laughs> and draw women in high heels who are size zero, who are white and blonde. <laughs> I mean, it's just, there are other people in the world. Come on. <laughs> okay. Let's get this division of the breast. I just want to get the angle of the arm. Okay. The arm is like going up. I do want to show a little bit of this breast and then I, I'm going to approximate the head is here and the hair comes down like that. Okay. And then there's these rocks. Actually this rock by the breast is going to help me. And so is this rock. So especially because this rock, the head is on it. And so it's a lot easier for me to place the head if I draw the rock. Okay. So that's where context really does matter, guys. Okay, so there's a basic mass of that figure. Oh, actually, I really should put in the arm. The arm is pretty important. Okay, so the arm comes, I'm gonna do the division, upper arm, lower arm, and then some of this form going up this way, and maybe some shoulder. Okay, now I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna get to this one, and I'm gonna try to get in where does this figure fit in relation to this figure? So this shoulder is about here and I see the leg, the thigh coming up, the angle of the arm, and then the mass of the breast and the, the head is like all the way over here. I think I put it too far that way. I'm going to show the, the motion of the hair coming down like that. Okay. There's the angle of the breast. I'm going to move this over so you guys can see that better. And then the arm, Oh, this is, this should be higher. I think this should be all the way over here. I think I like drew this too big. Oh, well, I think I'm just going to stick with it because as long as I get most of the figures in, I think I'm good. Okay. And here too, there's like a really dark shadow underneath her arm and there's like a rock that comes down. So this may feel like more work because you're like, Oh, I got to draw the rocks. I got to draw that. I gotta draw... Well, you, you, you have to do it if you want to put them in a place. Okay. I'm going to come down here because I just want to figure out these rocks in relation to the hair, something like that. And you know what I'm going to do for you guys? I'm actually going to make the picture a little bit bigger because that will make it easier for you. Okay. Let's go in here and I'm going to need to get the angle of the arm better because I think this shoulder is more substantial than I had it. So I'm back into mapping mode. And does everybody see 
x-ray vision, okay, that's what you're doing. You're not trying to see around the form. See through the figure. That's how you're going to contextualize it. Okay, everybody see my forms, okay? Really basic, really simple. And now this figure at the top, okay, I think I put it too low before. So let's get this figure. Actually, I think I'm going to place the hair because the hair in relation to this hair, it's a pretty dramatic shape. So it's nice for me to go in and do that. Okay. Another thing I would say, you guys, about what I'm showing you today, this goes for paintings as well. So whether you're doing a painting, whether you're doing a drawing, it's the same mapping process. And with painting even more, you can draw through things because you're going to paint over it. So it's actually a lot easier with painting. I'm going to get the angle of the hand. And then this arm is like there. It's hard to see that the contrast is so dim in that one area and the legs are like really foreshortened. Thank goodness they're all in similar poses. <laughs> it makes my life a lot easier. Okay, and it's a lot darker in that pocket. And this figure is pretty much all dark. There's only like a couple of bits of highlight in there. So I feel fine going in and being so bold about the way that that's being done. Okay, and now I'm gonna move up this, like this patch of tree, which is all the way up here. And I'm gonna add some of these branches that you guys see at the top. Sorry, I know that's a little hard to see like that. And then, okay, so this all has to go up because I had this area covered before. Okay, it's going over here like that. Okay, we need more at the top. So this is a composition. Tell me, you guys, are you having a hard time? <laughs> is this difficult? Because we can all commiserate that it's really hard to do. But th this is important. Okay, let's jump back down here. And I really want to solidify the location of certain things. And I messed up those heads last time. So I really want to redeem myself <laughs> and show myself I don't suck. <laughs> okay, let's get some lines. And I am going to approach this a little bit more architecturally than I usually do, because I think the main issue I see with figure drawing, people either draw things so they're too geometric, almost architectural, but then they'll also draw things too soft so they're too mushy, when in reality you need both. You can't draw only mushy or only hard. Okay, I really want to organize this breast because you know something, I think the arm is actually a lot lower. So let me move this up and then you guys can see better what's going on. Okay, so like this breast is pretty well defined and it's a lot bigger than I had it. So let's get that in there. And the nipple is down here at the bottom. This is pretty dark contrast. So I'm going to really nail that in. And let, let's redo the arm like 100%. <laughs> the arm was not happening. Okay, we gotta figure out all these wrinkles because there's another one here. This one goes up this way. See, it's like the weight distribution of the breast is so interesting to me because this breast is pushing that way. This breast is flipping down. And so that's where you won't get that weight distribution if you have a thin figure. You're not gonna see something like that. And so th this really does train you to see some of those differences. Okay, try something like that. I think the head is, it might be a little too small. I'm not so sure. I'll come back to it. I, I just feel like there's other things that are more important. So much of figure drawing, you guys, it's like prioritizing. It's like, what's really, really important? What, what can I not live without? And for right now, it's the arm. The arm really was not happening for a long time. I also want to get in the bony landmark. And, oh, this rock. <laughs> I got really distracted by the rock. Okay, this rock is like here. And there's this like triangle here, which is part of her hair. And then the arm, I guess the arm like sneaks behind the rock. Is that it? Yeah, the rock is like a little bit in front. And then here we go like that. And actually, does everybody see how the hand is a much darker color than the stomach? That's something you guys want to show. So I'm going to block this out. And this hand is tricky because it has foreshortening involved. I'm just going to map it out very generally, maybe the thumb a little bit. I'll come back to that later on. 
And let's see, whoa, stomach needs to come out way more. Okay, she's probably gonna go off the page, but that's all right. Okay. I mean, if this were a painting, I probably would take the time to go back and fix all those things. But I think since it's just a drawing demo, I think we're good. Okay. So, oh, not a bad angle. Let's push this down like this. So this is what happens when you bother to make changes is things really shift a lot, but that's the way it should be, if you ask me. Okay, this comes in. You know, I already feel like I'm spending too much time here. So I think as soon as I get a handle on the hand up here, and again, the, the arm is darker than the body down here. So even within one figure, you have a significant color shift that you have to pay attention to. Okay, so here, let's get in the thumb. I wanna show the angle of the knuckles back there. And then this is where the thigh emerges. And whoa, okay, this is like way off the page. Is it? Now see, if I had a better setup, I would stand back and look at this from a distance, but it's a little hard with all my gear. And let's put in the belly button so we know where things are. And actually, does everybody see there's like a little patch of dark here? Right here, where the figure is like touching the bottom. And then there's another rock down here. And then this is also quite dark too. So what I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to ground the figure. I'm trying to put it somewhere so that it feels like it has weight. If you don't have that weight, it's like it doesn't matter. The figure's just gonna float. So you don't wanna do that. And that's why, again, I'm prioritizing these rocks because these rocks, help to contextualize things. You know something, the thing about this type of approach, guys, drawing the multiple figures, you're probably not gonna get a good looking drawing today. It's probably not gonna look that great, even after I work on it for a little while, but that's fine. This is exercise, this is warm up. You have to do these types of exercises to figure out how these things work. And I'll tell you, it took me a long time to feel like I had the courage to do a multi-figure composition. And I feel like if I'd done more sketches like this, where I wasn't trying to like do a great drawing, I feel like I would have been less intimidated. So my feeling about a lot of this stuff, like a lot of people say, oh, you gotta wait till you're good at this before you do this. And I actually disagree with that because I feel like the longer you put it off, the longer it feels like a big intimidating thing. And actually, I think for a lot of people, if you're a beginner and you don't know very much, it's actually easier <laughs> because you, you like don't know how hard it is and then you do it. It doesn't feel like such a big deal. So I, I'm all for just jumping in. Like You don't have to hold back. Okay, I got to move on. Actually, let's work on this figure at the top because this figure at the top might sort of sandwich this figure together. So I'm going to jump a little bit up here, get in some of these tones, and then I'll come back to the figure that's in the middle. Sometimes that's a good strategy that you can use. Okay, so that figure, you know, this I'm just gonna go deep in because this really is like dark black. Okay, and then in here too, just building this up. That's one thing I like about the crayon is the, the buildup is really fun. I really enjoy that a lot. It's very satisfying. Okay, let's come back to this figure and then I really wanna show the contour here because this is a moment of contrast. The hair of this figure that's going behind this head is pretty dramatic. I'm gonna move that there and we see a little bit of her jawbone. Jawbones are gonna save you. You guys look at the jawbone, you're good. Okay, and then this is a very dark shadow. So I'm gonna pull that out. And here it gets complicated because there's form underneath the breast. Does everybody see that little line that I just did? And then, jeez, what's going on up here? Okay, a lot of form to organize. This form is in front of this form. So that's what I was talking about earlier about an overlap, that this is in front of this, okay? And let, let's do more of this compression on the stomach. And then let's put in the belly button because that's really gonna help. Um, and actually that does push this back a little bit, but I think that's okay. And then a little bit of this leg. Okay, the arm, I really need to work on the arm because the arm is too short. Okay, so the arm really bends around here See guys, what I'm doing right now 
it's less drawing than it is looking. Like I'm really looking. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm not looking at my drawing that much. I feel, I hope, <laughs> I hope I'm demonstrating that I am looking at the figures much more than I'm looking at my drawing. Because my drawing does not have any information. My drawing is just the result. The information is up there. That's where I'm finding things. Okay, and then this, oh, okay. I, I need to add in some more background. And maybe back here, a little bit more background. Okay, so what you guys are seeing right now, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. You're, you're basically seeing my brain dump <laughs> onto the page. I mean, you show this to anybody and be like, you can't draw. <laughs> like, this is what it's supposed to be. This is what you gotta do. Okay, I'm gonna block this in. And I do wanna get a little more tone back here because I do feel like I lost the breast. And the arm, oh yeah, geez, I did lose the arm. Okay, the arm is like really dark right here. I just wanna put in something dark to anchor it in and then we'll come back and work on it some more. And this figure, if I go to the top, I do wanna show the separation because here it's, it's all like gray, but then here it's like really dark. So let's do that. And then be a little bit more of this bumpiness over here on that side. Okay, so now let's start pulling things out, okay? Because um, really what I'm showing you guys right now, this does not show off my drawing skill. This is the totally not glamorous, really unromantic version of drawing. And I feel like for a lot of people, they would be like, you don't know what you're doing. This doesn't look good right away. You've been working on it for 20 minutes. Shouldn't it look better by now? No, it should not look better by now it should be a mess. And if you guys have a mess, then you're doing a great job, okay? So don't tell yourselves because your drawing doesn't look good, you're, you're not a good artist, that's not true. It just means you're building. See, that's why I sort of have issues with the way a lot of people teach art on YouTube because I feel that a lot of it is to get instantaneous results, like to do shortcuts so things look really good right away. But I think those shortcuts really limit you in terms of the ambition and scale of what you can do. Because like this thing I'm doing today, you're not gonna get good results right away, but long-term it will. It's just, it's harder. <laughs> it's much harder for a lot of people. Okay, let's start to bulk up some of these dark areas. So now what I'm doing is I'm sort of surveying this whole scheme. I'm saying, what do I wanna pull out? Because you have to edit. You can't draw everything with a dark outline. You have to pick out things. So what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna squint and see what really jumps out at me. And what jumps out at me is this arm, okay? So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna really push this arm. Actually, I think it's too short, is it? Yeah, I feel like I need more of the lower arm down here. So that pushes this here. So yeah, it's like we may not have this like dazzling detailed colored pencil drawing here, but you guys are learning to do the real thing. I mean, this is, this is really what it is. And it's hard. It's freaking hard. It's much easier to teach things that um, I think are faster and get more result because then people feel more satisfied. And it's like, who doesn't want to feel more satisfied? But the hard stuff takes time and it takes patience and it takes a willingness for the drawing to look pretty bad for a long time. And what did I do with that hand? That's a mess. That truly is a mess. You know what I might just do on the next, I might just let this be a horrible mess and just see what happens. Okay. Yeah, that looks terrible. Ugh. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's get in here and I'm just gonna totally go to town. We're gonna pull out things that we think should be emphasized more. So right now I'm just jumping around and I'm just making some areas pop. So this pops here and this definitely pops. And this hand, uh, I'm gonna come back to that later. This should pop more and this should pop. So it's like you're an editor. It's like you're picking and choosing. Like, what do I really wanna emphasize? What is important here? Like to me, this area is pretty important with the breast coming down. This is an area of tension coming through and this is a, pretty dark area as well. And then I am gonna do a little bit of the mouth, not very much, but just something so that I can figure out where the chin is. 
because otherwise this area is so confusing. It, it does not help that the hair is like flopped over. Okay, guys, that's the first 20 minutes. Let me switch my scenes and we'll see what you guys are talking about. Okay. By the way, if you guys did not know this, we do have the drawings that I do here in the live drawing streams available in my Etsy shop. So all you need to do, go to my Etsy shop, and I believe the link is in the description below, and we do have the drawings available. And just go into this section called Art Prof Drawings because I got other stuff in there. But check that out if you guys are interested. Okay, let's see what people are saying. I'm gonna scroll up right now and see what you guys are talking about. Whitney Bennett, thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate the way you guys support us. Thank you, thank you. Jay Cabby says, it'd be interesting to see you step away and show us how it looks from being stepped back. I know it might be impractical, but totally it would teach us a bit too. Yeah, it's really hard because the situation with the mic and the light, and it's really, really hard. So maybe I'll figure out a way to show you guys that. I mean, basically what you would be seeing is me going like that, like just squinting at it. That's usually what I do is a lot of squinting. Tom G says, I must be rocking this drawing. It's an absolute mess. Awesome. See, this is important, you guys. This mindset, like being okay with crummy drawings and knowing that they are leading you to something bigger and better. Whitney is saying, I love the movement and the forms, the ideas, the process, everything. This is so similar to my own process. It takes courage. It does because you, you can't cut corners with this type of thing, you guys. It really does not work that way. Evie Dragon says, I'm a high school student, wants to become an art teacher. Should I go to art school or a university with an art program? I think it depends on, let's see, you wanna be an art, it, it depends on if you wanna teach high school or college because the degrees are different. If you wanna teach high school, you have to get certified. If you wanna teach college, you have to get an MFA. So you know what I would do, Evie? I would definitely jump into our Discord channel and if you ask there, I can give you a much better answer because it's a little bit more involved than I have time to describe right now. Let's see. Who else is chatting? Builder D says, it's cool to see, but I thought it was problematic to sell drawings of other artists' photographs or work. What limitations, probably moral ones, are acceptable generally? I think it's okay when you're not, I mean, I think if you show people that it's after a certain photographer. So if you guys look at the listing that I have here on the right side of the text, what I titled it was male nude figure drawing in crayon after George Platt lines. So in the listing, I'm very clear that it's after George Platt lines. I don't just say male figure drawing. Like, I think that's not cool. I think that artists for a long time have done paintings and drawings inspired by other artists. And they'll say print study after Durer or painting study after Degas. I think as long as you're clear about that, it's fine. I mean, you can't obviously like print out a George Platt lines photo and sell that, like that's not cool. But I think a drawing that's based on someone else's work, if you're clear, this is after Laura Aguilar, I think that's okay. Okay, let's see. Jayita says, these two works have been like a, yeah, who cares? I'm going to be drawing anyway. So hard ones are like, yeah, it's a party. Exactly. <laughs> and Priya says, my drawing is just chaos. Good. We'll share our chaos in the Discord so everybody can see what's going on. Jade Leaf says, I think I had a nervous breakdown because I couldn't make out the figure right out of the back very well. At least I tried. Yes. You guys, the only thing that matters here is that you try. You don't have to make a good drawing every time you sit down. I, <laughs> that's not happening with me. I can tell you that for sure. So can we all just make crummy drawings together? Because this is an important part of the process. You'd never think that you would hear a teacher say something like that, but absolutely, definitely. Jayita says, my inner soul was screaming and saying, stay, stay. <laughs> All right, I I'm going to use that from now on, Jayita. My inner soul was screaming. That's almost as good as the high school students who tell me that they're dead inside. Inner soul is screaming. Okay, that's a really, really good one. 
Elijah says, can you do videos on less popular media like Egg Tempera? Well, Egg Tempera, we don't have anybody on staff who paints with that technique. So I would have to find an outside artist and that gets really expensive really fast. So we would like to have a tutorial on everything <laughs> that exists out there. But the thing is, what I've been finding is that it's important for us to prioritize the needs of the community. So whatever is the technique that we see the biggest need, that's where we're gonna go first. And eventually I would love to do a silicone mold casting tutorial, but it's like the number of people who need that is so small compared to the number of people who need to learn about lighting, who need to learn about linear perspective. So I do feel subject matter wise, we gotta tackle that stuff first because Egg tempera is so involved that it's like, if you don't understand composition, the egg tempera is not gonna help you that much. So I feel like we're still in the mode of trying to get out all the fundamentals. And as you can imagine, it takes a long time. This is a lot. There's so many things that we have yet to get to that we need to get to as soon as we can. Let's see, Blue Will Spirit says crummy drawings. I can do that. See, exactly, this is great. Johnny wants to know about a soft pastel tutorial. That's definitely on our list because we have gotten a lot of requests for that because although I have that crayon drawing tutorial that I have seen a lot of people respond to, it's not the same thing. Soft pastel behaves very, very differently and it's hard to control. So at some point, yes, we will. I just have to get to Utah first. <laughs> so a lot of things are going to be a little bit on hold for a little bit until I get to Utah. But I'm hoping that when I get to Utah, I'm going to just laser focus on Art Prof. And hopefully we can get to a more stable place financially and budget wise so that I can stay 100% on Art Prof. I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit of a risk, but let's just see. Hopefully it works out. And let's see, Tamili made it to the live chats for the first time. Love you. Watch so many videos in the past weeks. Very cool. Yeah. Tell me in the chat, is this your first time in a live stream? Because this is so cool when you guys catch us live. It's just great. It's like the closest interaction I could possibly get with you guys other than having um, an in-person meeting. Jacqueline just joined. Very cool. What awesomeness have you missed? Well, you've missed me making a big mess. <laughs> That's what you've missed. And Petra says, my mother-in-law gifted me soft pastel paper. What is the benefit of using that type of paper for soft pastels? It's sandpaper. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Soft pastel paper. It's usually like charcoal paper, which actually I'm going to do for the next drawing. But um, the thought behind it is that soft pastel and charcoal paper they have a slight tooth to them. And so the concept is that something that's very powdery can grip itself better with that tooth. Because if you use very, very smooth paper, like Bristol board, and you put soft pastel on it, the soft pastel is not gonna adhere. It's gonna just slide off because it's too slippery. And so that's the reason you have that texture. Jay Davis says, where would you advise a true beginner to start in drawing? Charcoal, soft pastels, etc." I think charcoal is a pretty good place to start. I think soft pastel is harder because you have color. With charcoal, it's black and white. It's more straightforward. And we do have tutorials. Actually, this one, this live drawing session where I did this female nude back, I do demonstrate how to do graphite. So that might be really cool. Wow, there's a lot of new people here today. This is really great. And we've got Kim from Brazil. And Alice says, wow, a lot of art prof virgins today. <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's what we should call all you guys who are here for the first time. Mara is saying, what household objects do you recommend as a reference to draw? I would say more anything that speaks to you. If you look at, for example, this cup and you're like, that's so boring. Don't draw it. <laughs> draw something that you find a connection with. There is one day I was eating orange slices at breakfast and they were all on a plate, like ripped apart. And I just thought they were beautiful. There was something about it. And so just find something that you have a connection with. It can be ugly, it can be pretty. In fact, pretty things aren't always the most interesting to draw. Sometimes it's something hideous that is really, really fun to draw. So think about that. Okay, 
Guys, we're going to work on this one for another 20 minutes. Let's see where this can go. And then I'll stop and take another break and we'll do a chat. Okay, cool. So let me move back to my drawing spot. Let's see if I can get this drawing to a point that is not embarrassing. Let's see, that that's the goal, okay? It, it's not good, it's not embarrassing. <laughs> Let's try that. Okay, let's see. Gotta get this going. So let's start again. We're gonna do 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. I am gonna slow down a little bit, but I do wanna draw with darker lines and more confidence because I am at a point where I feel confident enough in where things are laid out that I think I can start to do that. Okay, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to town on a couple of these areas and I'm gonna get more gestural. I think somebody said last time that they noticed how fun it was to sort of reinvigorate the drawing. And so that's what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna have fun pushing down and making more dramatic marks. So th this is sort of almost back to the beginning where you are sort of crazy and out of control, but I feel that I need to do that because for me right now, the drawing is feeling very hesitant and I want it to be a more confident drawing. So it might get way messier, but who cares? <laughs> I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but my, my daughter's whole thing, she, she gets all these phrases that she gets into every now and then and one of her wants she doesn't do this anymore but a couple of years ago her phrase was who cares deal with it <laughs> it's like very unsympathetic but kind of awesome at the same time i was like i should use that on my students who cares deal with it <laughs> that i'm sure that would go over well in the classroom okay and i, I do want to get okay well, let's play with the rocks a little bit let me move this up so you guys can see what's going on because I, I just don't like how hesitant this drawing feels right now. It, it feels so like afraid and that's bothering me. So I'm gonna try to put down a couple marks that are a little bit more jagged and more assertive because I feel that I need that. Like, especially this rock over here. So this might seem a little bit crazy that I'm drawing so dark but I don't know, I, I need the like confidence boost in terms of giving the drawing more energy, I suppose. Like that already feel like it's, it's sort of a mess right now, but it already feels better to me because I feel like I'm taking a stand. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm like not letting anybody get in my way. Yeah, so I, I'm really gonna just go to town on this really get dark. I mean, before I wasn't letting myself do that, but I feel that I've feel that I've earned it now. <laughs> okay. And you know, I am going to draw the hands a little bit, the, the fingers, at the very least, just place a couple spots so that I can start to see the marks coming down. This, this arm is too stiff. Yeah. You know, I missed this form back here. This form is more dramatic. Let's make that stronger and then here there's a really nice patch of dark hopefully you guys can see this okay there we go so there's like these little rocks down here and i'm gonna just do a couple marks just to show like the texture so we, we see how harsh that area is okay like here this is like the edge of the rock there's something here. So like, this is the stuff that people don't draw. People, most of the time, it's the figure with nothing around it. Contextualize it, give it a place, okay? Now, I'm probably spending too long in this figure, but I'm feeling so insecure about it that I really need to spend serious time. So let's just really go to town on this figure. You know, th this really needs work. Okay, so this area, crap there's not enough space here i really should have done a better job with that but whatever okay let's really darken this 
And I do think about drawing as a very sculptural experience. So if you guys look at the way that I draw, I, I really am thinking less about line and more about mass. And that's where it's like, awesome. Love drawing big figures, it's great. Okay. And now th this, so does everybody see how like, this is a very thick line. This line is barely there and then it comes back. So really think about at this stage, variety in your line work. Because if you don't do that, you end up with a very outlined, very boring figure. And like even the little things like these little dots that are on the rocks, they might seem unimportant, but to me, they're very important because they really say something, I think, about the texture. Because then you have like the softness of the stomach. Let's get that in there. And let's get the belly button to be a little rounder. And then maybe a little bit in here to show, I think, more dramatic shading. Coming in here and this arm has to pop Let's get that going. Yeah, this has to be way darker. I definitely did not do enough back there. And let's get this arm a little bit more solid because what I'm looking for too, you guys may have noticed this, is I'm looking at what is a hard edge and what is a soft edge? Because sometimes you really want a soft edge, other times you want a hard edge. It depends on what you're trying to emphasize. Keep thinking about what you're emphasizing and what you're letting go. There's gonna be sections here, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them, and it's going to be other sections that I spend a long time on them. So you can't be very even in that way. Wow, that felt good to put down the hair. I think I want to do a little more coming out like that because the hair is so like, oh, awesome. Thank you, Laura Aguilar. Great. She just died recently, I think. I mean, not like super recent, but she she was she's pretty contemporary. I feel like the recent artist to die was Christo. I think he died like last week or something. Yeah. Okay, here's that. Okay, and now I'm gonna pull up this way and start working on this arm because this is a very dramatic arm going up here. Okay, I feel reinvigorated. Does anybody feel like they got a little kick in terms of their energy level? Cause I definitely am feeling that now and I feel better. So, that will happen. You'll have drawings where you, you just feel like, Ugh, and then all of a sudden something happens to reinvigorate it. And that's good. Anytime you can do that, that's a good thing. Okay. This hand, I really, really need to work on it because I really feel like I lost it. And then really pull out the wrist as much as you can. And then actually there's a rock back here. I just want to add a little bit of this background. See, here's the thing, like I get a lot of questions in the Discord, like I said earlier, people wanting to know, how do I do a background? Here's how you do a background. It's you go in and you spend time on it. You develop it at the same time. You don't add it as a last minute backdrop. You, you think about where to put it, okay? So this is not, backgrounds are not afterthoughts. Backgrounds should happen at the same time that you do everything else. Okay, see, I want to give this breast a little bit more form going this way and really dig into this neck, make that very dramatic. And this is pretty dark as well. Uh, shoot, I'm getting a little lost. Okay, Th this is okay. This fold needs more for sure. And now I'm trying to like scan and I think Definitely not dark enough down here. I've got to really pump this up. It's all relative, okay? It's not look at that leg and color it in. It's how dark is this leg compared to the other leg? Like this. So like I'm looking at this thigh and I'm saying, okay, this thigh is darker than that thigh. That's what you're looking at. It, it's not what color is it? It's how dark is it in relation to something else? Okay, this is feeling very flat to me. So I want to get back in here and start to really like carve the surface a little bit more. And then th there's like these little nuances in the form. And this I might come back to later because I feel myself getting a little bit picky right now, but I, I do like that she feels more solid as a form. Okay, it's still a mess. I, I still have 
a long ways to go on this figure, but it's better. It, I feel a little bit more confident about it. The other thing, I mean, this is a concept that some of you guys have heard me talk about in the past is atmospheric perspective. So this figure is gonna be crisper. It's gonna be more detailed than the figures in the background. I'm gonna keep these figures in the background a lot fuzzier and a lot lower in contrast. And so that's a deliberate decision. This is not a, it looks like that, you draw it like that. You can't be that accurate about it. You have to make adjustments as an artist to push and pull the sections that you really want to emphasize. So think about it like that. Okay, I'm getting picky now, so I got to make myself move on. Let's get into, let's see, this figure over here. Actually, no, I'm going to do this one. <laughs> We're going to go to town on this figure. This figure has just beautiful forms. Like I just, oh my God, the hair is so gorgeous. Love it. Okay. And I'm not going to color it in 100% because I like showing some of the forms, like there are these hairs that are going in all different directions. And if I color this in as a flat color, I'm gonna lose that motion. So on purpose, I'm not gonna color it in. I'm gonna add some, but I'm leaving little traces of white in there. So that way it feels a little bit more like an area that's gonna breathe. That's better. Okay, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to solidify some of these shadows. And here I might actually stop drawing with the side and I might start drawing with the tip more. That, that's what I do is in the beginning, I use the side a lot, but then as I get more detailed, I start drawing with the tip more because the tip gives you more control. But you know what, in the beginning, you don't want control. You wanna be a little out of control. Okay, so let's work on, there's the thigh going on up here. And, ooh, I got to draw in the arm. The arm got really lost. Let's get that. And then there's like a really dark shadow here. So let's bulk that up like this. I might just stick with this drawing for the rest of the stream because I feel like it, it could go further than this. And I, I want to show you guys that the technique is not total crap. <laughs> that it can, can look not horrible if you really spend time on it. That's the thing, I, I think a lot of drawing techniques and, and painting as well, it just looks so bad for so long that it's hard to want to stick with it. I mean, how many of you guys right now are like, oh, I want to start over? <laughs> I mean, I think everybody has that thought at some point when they work on a drawing. I think that's inevitable. That's just the way it is. Okay, let's get in some of these skin folds like this. Oh, that feels good. Awesome. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the tip more to control more of the shading, maybe a little bit up here. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta pump up some of this. Does everybody see how rigorous that is? It, it's funny, like you wouldn't think that you would draw with that much rigor in the middle of a drawing, but you can. You, you can really keep it up and going. Tell me how you guys are doing. Those of you who are drawing with me, how are you doing? You feeling a little bit better? You, you still feel like, ugh. And it's fine if you do. Just because I'm feeling better doesn't mean that you have to feel better. It's cool. Okay, the, the foot is so straight. Like I only see like a little bit of the foot. So what I am gonna do though is start blocking in more some of these shapes in the background. Here I am switching back to the side a little bit because there are these like gorgeous lines. Like, isn't this beautiful? These like little squiggly lines. So it's like a lot of this might seem really chaotic, but it's like, for me, these marks bring back some of the energy in the drawing that I think are important. Let's try to organize this a little bit more. Yeah, that's feeling better. Okay, there's still a lot that needs to be done. And I do feel like I wanna refine this way more, but I gotta move on, okay? You gotta make yourself move on. As much as you wanna like make it look great, and I do, I do want to make it look, I don't want to make it look bad, that's for sure. You don't want to make it look great. Okay, get a little bit more to the side. And I do want to add like over here, there's like a couple rocks and some like really geometric shapes. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get this figure to sit in the space. And that means drawing what's around that figure. Darkening this arm. 
this is where things start to get really satisfying because you start to feel like you're, you're starting to actually pull things out of here. Okay, now this figure is visibly much lighter than this figure in terms of the tones. So here I'm gonna be more selective. I'm not going to pull out as many dark areas. I mean, if anything, I, I think I'm gonna work on the hair because the hair does have this like dramatic swoosh to it. Let's get that in. And it's, it's still pretty light, but I, I need to build it up a little bit more. And then, oh, the rock. Hang on a sec. There's a rock. Oh, yeah, this looks like an arm. That's not good. Okay, let's make this look rock-like. That's going to look a lot better. Okay, here we go. Is that? No, 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 no. This is... Oh, okay, there's an area of tone here. And then if I follow the rock, it comes up. Oh, okay, all right. I did not make that hair wide enough, and so that's why I was not seeing that surface, because this hair... Let me move it over so you guys can see better. This hair on this side comes around like that. Yeah, I love drawing hair. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like drawing it. I mean, a lot of people ask me how to draw hair. We, we should do a stream on that actually, is how to draw hair, because it's not an easy thing to do and people get lost really fast. But there are a couple tips you can do. One of them is to look at the direction of the hair and look at the hair as a mass. Don't look at the hair as individual hairs because that's when you're gonna get really confused and not know what to do. Okay, there, that feels a little bit better like that. Um, and you know, on this side, yeah, I feel that I do need to show the rock. So let's put in some little like just dots back here. Just if anything to show that this is not a body because that, that's really what the rocks do, is the rocks are a comparison. Like the rocks make the body look softer and the bodies make the rocks look harder. So that's an important distinction to be making. Okay, now let's get in, let's really draw these hands because I sort of avoided them before. <laughs> I do it too, you guys. Like all these things that I bother you guys, I do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know sometimes I feel sort of like a little bit hypocritical because I'm like bothering people I'm like Clara you do that too I'm like yes I know <laughs> uh, it's so much easier to give advice than it is to take it what I've noticed I was actually laughing really hard because when I announced my decision to leave RISD and just focus on art prof one of my students, she actually gave me my own advice back. I was like, I told you that. She's like, I know. <laughs> it's so funny. Actually, Lauren likes to do that. Lauren's a teaching artist here at Art Prof. She loves throwing my own <laughs> advice back to her because over the years I've given her a lot of advice and she's like, you were sad. I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> like, sorry. Yes, I know I did. Okay. Now here, if you guys look at, okay, so this is a breast and this is the stomach. You got to look at it and say, which is darker than the other? This breast is lighter than this. So I'm going to darken this. And so that's where you're thinking about comparisons. You're not trying to do one thing at a time. That, that's the biggest mistake, I think, with figure compositions. People draw, try to draw one thing at a time. And then they wonder why it looks so fragmented. And that's why it's, it's just because things get really crowded really fast. Okay, this is pretty dark, that angle there. And actually the shoulder sort of disappeared. So I'm gonna put that back. So it's a little bit more dramatic. And this arm has a pretty strong shadow. Oh shoot, what am I doing? Okay, uh, what? stupid fingers. Okay, let's just slow down. Part of me wants to keep moving really fast, but with think, oh my God, what is going on? Okay, wait, let's count. <laughs> I gotta make sure I have enough fingers. Uh, one, two, <laughs> three, four. Is that correct? I think it is. I hope. <laughs> That's not so terrible, right? It's fine. <laughs> Okay, and then more shadow here. I'm starting to slow down because I'm trying to get this leg a little bit better. It's hard because there's a strange lighting. Like if you guys look here on the stomach, there's like little patches of highlight that come out and they make it hard 
to figure out this form like that, I might really spend a lot of time because you guys ever work on a drawing long enough that you're like, yeah, I know it's about process. But part of you like really wants to resolve it. That's how I'm feeling right now. Like I could stop, but I don't want to. I, I want to keep going. It's like, I don't know, it's not satisfying enough for me to just go. Now, see, even at this stage, I'm still moving around and changing things and shifting how I work on things. So don't feel at a certain point, oh, I'm done now. I can just focus on this one area. You can, you have to keep that motion going. Thank you for the super chat, Whitney. Really appreciate your support, guys. We always appreciate those super chats. Okay, that's 20 minutes. So let me go back to my talk scene and let's see what you guys are talking about. Okay. Let's see what is going on. I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top. Okay, let's see what people are talking about. Guy is saying, to be honest, I think I'm liking the drawing better than the photograph. Well, you know something? That's a good thing because I think the thing for me is if you're going to use photographic reference, if I look at the photographic reference and I feel that the photo looks better than the drawing, it says to me that you're not manipulating the photograph enough to justify turning that photo into a drawing. Like we have a video actually, maybe some of you guys have seen it, it's called Photo Reels and Can Be So Boring. And a lot of the reason it's because the drawing, the way it's drawn, it's like it can't compete with the photograph. So you have to say, what is the quality of the drawing that the photograph does not have? What are you gonna put into that that can really happen? Let's see what else people are saying. Sid says, I'm terrible at body figures. This is a great help. Good, I'm really happy to see that. Sumona says, I just started inking and is starting to take form. Excellent. And let's see, uh, how long was the timer? So Danya, I guess I've worked on this drawing for 40 minutes now. I've done two sessions. I'm probably going to do another one because I'm feeling like I really want to push this a lot further. Guy is asking, how strongly are you pushing for those darkest values? I mean, to a certain degree, I have a limited value because the color I'm using is a burnt sienna color. It's nowhere near as dark as a black, but I'll use the full value. I mean, whatever that range is, I'm definitely going to hit that up. Um, Chili says, or Chill, I can't even draw a hand properly. I'm so angry. I have to lay down and count to 10. You know what? You should do that, but get back up and draw. And there's no properly. You draw what you want to draw. And don't stress, guys. Your, your mind can be such a big distraction. Because if you're stressing about does it look good, does it look bad, you're not thinking about the shapes. You're not breaking it down. You're not thinking, you're forgetting about all those things. That's what you should be spending your time on. Spend your time on thinking about the drawing, not about how bad is the drawing. Really, really hard. Uh, let's see. Wow, there's a lot of comments here. Okay, I'll see. Sorry, I don't have any um, moderator today, so I have to stream through everything myself. Priya says, now these women in my drawing look somewhat like blobs. You gotta start somewhere, you know? You can't have it be perfect. Kane Feathermore says, I love your figure drawing live streams. I have so much fun drawing along. It's great for me, guys, because honestly, a lot of the time, this sounds weird, but I feel like I can't justify drawing just for fun because I got too many other things that are more pressing. So these live streams are so relaxing for me because I'm like, oh, I can draw and it's not for an exhibition, it's not for a tutorial, it's just drawing to draw. And for me, that is so liberating. Cause you know what? I don't care how this drawing comes out. It doesn't matter. I'm just here to teach and have fun at the same time. Builder D says, do you still find with your experience you get fundamental differences in how you approach drawing? In other words, I keep hearing your preference for tone over line. How likely is that to switch? Probably not that likely at this stage because I just love tone. Tone is just the greatest thing. I mean, some of you guys, I think, are doing the 2500 challenge with Jordan McCracken Foster, another teaching artist in the Discord. 
and check out that channel. There's a channel called 2500 Drawing Challenge. And that would be a really good companion to what I'm doing because his 2500 Drawing Challenge, you can't use tone. He's insisting that everybody does line. And that's why I have different people on staff because you're gonna learn something from Jordan. You're not, not gonna learn from me. And so I think we're actually a really good complement to each other because we do teach very different things and you're gonna learn something different from him then you're gonna learn from me. And that's really, really important to have that balance. Jade Leaf says, for so long, I've really avoided drawing more than one person in a single picture. This is really challenging me to do what I've been avoiding for ages. I'll tell you, I was the same way, Jade Leaf. I think for a long time, I just was like, oh, that's too hard. And it's like, the longer you put it off, the harder it gets. The more you just tackle it head on, it's just a lot, lot easier. Missy is saying, how do I get that pastel you're using brand and name? Okay, well, if you guys go down to the video description below, I do have Amazon links, Amazon affiliate links for all of these items. So you'll find the link down there. It's Karen Dash Neo Color One crayons. You can buy them as a set. You can also buy them one by one, but it is easier to buy them as a set because then you get a whole range of colors. Nuev says, thank God I found your channel. It motivates me to never stop and keep experimenting. That experimentation is so critical, you guys. You can't just find one way of working and just do that over and over and over again. I see that a lot on YouTube. And like I said before, I know why, because it's easier. <laughs> of course, people want to do the easier way. This is much harder, but the rewards much, much bigger. Let's see. Guy says, the other day I drew my friend when a child and she turned out looking like that curly headed kid from Stranger Things. She liked it. Though. I love that kid. He's so, so cute. I love Stranger Things because Stranger Things is like my childhood. Like the, the 80s stuff is just like hilarious to me. Noah Q says, so much motivation. I really want to get big with my drawing and this helps. Priya is saying, what size is your paper? My paper is 18 inches by 24 inches. I'm going to type that in. Paper is 18 inches by 24 inches. Sorry, I know you guys outside the US think we're all crazy that we don't use the metric system. And it is kind of dumb that we use inches. But anyway, that's what we're looking at. And Tamili says, what do you think about contemporary art? You going to do any videos on this topic? I've read so many bad comments under videos which try to explain contemporary art. Okay, well, my in a nutshell, because again, this is another big topic. I don't think it's fair to clump it together as all oh, contemporary art. Contemporary art is so diverse, you guys. You can't say all oh, contemporary art sucks. And I know that is a common thinking for a lot of people because they do see a lot of contemporary art that's bad. I know people have been making bad art forever and ever and ever, but you got to know where to look. There's a lot of great work out there, but it's hard to find. I think a lot of it doesn't get covered in the media and the media likes to talk about the same 10 artists all the time. And I know a lot of artists who I think are brilliant, who don't get a lot of coverage, who a lot of people don't hear about them. And so I think that to lump it all together as all contemporary art is really unfair because you just can't like, what are we going to look at Jenny Seville and look at her the same way that we would look at Felix Gonzalez Torres. Those are two really different artists. And for some people, they might hate Jenny Seville. Some people might hate Felix Gonzalez Torres. They're such different artists. And so I think that it's important to remember people made crappy art in the Renaissance too. I mean, it's just, you don't see it because the good stuff makes it into the museums. So I just think that you have to find the certain area of contemporary art that you like. And I think it's just a lot of people have it and they're sort of exposed to the big names and that's sort of all you see, but there's a lot more out there that I think um, is definitely gonna be your cup of tea. There's gonna be something, you just have to find it. That's what's really, really hard about that. Let's see, Radiant Overall says, find it easier to draw and motivate yourself with these streams going on. Thank you, great. Yeah, I mean, I just feel that to be an artist, you got to feel like you're part of something. You can't feel like you're sitting alone in a room. It's very depressing. Trust me, I have been there. And you got to feel that there are other people out there that speak your language. 
because your family and friends, they're not going to cut it. I'm sure you love them to death, but they don't get it. They're not going to sympathize with some of the crazy thoughts that go through your head when you're an artist. So yes. Okay. Let's get back into the stream. I think what I'm going to do is one more set and then we'll call it a day because I have a feeling I'm going to get a little bit too picky once I get to that point. I'm picky enough with my drawings, guys, that when I go back and I look at older drawings, all I see is mistakes. I just think about, oh, should have done that better. And I feel that way. I did that Benedict Cumberbatch portrait, I think a few days ago. And it's sitting on my shelf and I'm like, it's too smooth. I'm so mad that I didn't make it grittier. <laughs> like that's all I think when I look at that image. Okay, so let's get started. This is our 20 minute pose. See if we can get this to a better spot. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna do some squinting and see, I think it's this pocket that I'm not very happy with. So let's go in and well, yes, the figures need more work. I just think that this space is not well defined. So I just want to put something back there so that I'm not totally lost. And I really want to get this figure more solid. So it's like these two figures back here. Well, this one to me, I'm going to do a little self crit right now. And maybe you guys should do that too. Self critique. This got too well articulated for me. I want to make it softer and lower in contrast because this one should be higher in contrast and it should have sharper edges. So you know what I'm going to do? This one, I'm just going to do like a little pass of some darker tones because I want this figure to like sink a little bit more. It's popping out too much for my taste. So I'm going to just cut back on some of these like brighter areas and let all the edges in this figure get softer because they're too harsh right now. And I don't like that. I don't like that its contrast is so high. So even if this is darker than the actual figure really is in the photo, that's, that's fine. That's okay. It can be that way. And that's where you don't have to stay faithful to the photograph. You, you can change things up. It's fine. If it works better for your drawing, then do that. Yeah, like right now what I'm doing is I, I'm just sort of going in and refining some areas because now that I actually have a structure to follow, it actually is possible to do that. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm sort of blending down a lot of the details that were sticking out too much because I want this to be a little bit more atmospheric. I feel like it's too harsh. Okay, so that brings it down a little bit. I do feel this arm was losing. And does everybody notice how my strokes are getting smaller? Like in the beginning, you're doing stuff like this, but not anymore. Now I'm starting to slow down and that is part of the process. You go from big sweeping moments to little itty bitty smaller sections. So let's get this, oh, okay. I think this needs a little bit more work and the lighting is really hard. It's, it's very strange looking. And it's, again, it's because of those trees. The trees are not helping me right now. And I do wanna show this shadow being a little bit more subtle. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the tip and I'm sort of evening it out because the shadow was a little bit inconsistent and using the tip gives me the control that I need to even out that area. And I'm doing the same thing down here with the arm. And yes, this is darker than it actually is in the photo, but I feel that it's necessary right now. And then back here, I'm gonna do a, sim a similar thing with this figure on the right-hand side. Let me push this over here so you guys can really see that. And this figure, I'm gonna really like just sink into the drawing. I really wanna make this softer and more subtle. And you know what, these little like trails, I suppose, this is gonna help me get this figure to sit a little bit more because I, I do feel that this figure is sort of, I don't know, it's floating a little bit and there's some awkward sections with the other figures. So let's see if we can get this one to sit a little bit more because there is this like sort of hill that this figure is coming down. So let's articulate that some more and then some dark here. Yeah, this now it's time to whip out 
the crazy strokes. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe articulate these edges more. Tell me in the chat, you guys, if you feel like things are starting to come together in your drawings, because this is the stage where it does start to feel a little bit chaotic, less chaotic. And you do start to feel like things are starting to come together. I mean, they're still not where I want them to be, but you, you do start to feel like, okay, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not the apocalypse. It, it sort of feels like it, but not quite. And I just want to have fun with these trees. Sorry, I know you guys can't see that. Push that down that okay and i do want to show like this there are these sort of dots that are coming down the top bring those like that okay now with this figure this is sticking out too much so i'm going to blend that in make the transition a little bit softer like that and then these highlights i want them to pop more so i'm going to draw around them that and then that gets a little bit more easy out and then i'm gonna let this figure just sink into almost nothing i'm gonna come back to this figure and now i'm really gonna jump around in fact i gotta get back to this figure at the bottom i feel like this figure at the bottom it doesn't have the subtlety that i wanted to and actually ooh, 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 look at this shadow core see this if you guys watch my video with michael fassbender <laughs> about lighting then you'll see what a shadow core is. It's the darkest part of the shadow. And then the section behind it is a reflected light. And this I'm really gonna make dark because that's a really dark outline that I definitely did not articulate the way I should have earlier. So let's get that really in there. And then this breast, this is really hard to see, but there's a little cast shadow. It's so minor, it's almost not there. So do you see how that cast shadow, it's like it pushes the weight distribution of the breast so that it feels more substantial. And now again, I'm blending to make this more even. It's nice with the crown. The crown really makes it feasible. Okay, and then here I'm gonna to start to do solar stuff. And what I'm doing to make that happen is I'm, I'm not touching the paper that much. I'm using it very sparsely. And I wanna show there's like a, shadow let's see i'm starting to really get in tune with what's a soft edge and what's a hard edge so really think about that in your drawings it's like are you making it soft are you making it hard and what kind of results do you get from that let's get some of these transitions better that's what i'm doing right now i'm really just focusing on transitions like how soft is something how harsh is something let's get oh and actually this nipple needs a lot of work so let's get in here. There are some things in here that could be better. I mean, I know some of the spacing's a little off, but whatever, who cares? I mean, I know it's easy to get really stuck on that. Like actually I had a couple of people after I did my Benedict stream, people were like, it doesn't look like him. I'm like, I don't care. It's a study, like it doesn't matter. And I know some people really care about that, but I don't, so too bad. <laughs> okay, um, knuckles, very important to put in. This hand is just so weird. It's the angle. The angle is like not good and I did not do a great job on it. So whatever. Okay, now let's get down here. Really layer some of this. I really want to get the stomach because this this form is beautiful. Like that that's such an incredible form. So let, let's really try to refine that more so that we get more of those subtleties. And a lot of this, again, is the tip, evening out the shading. And I still draw pretty fast. Okay, th this, this needs a softer edge. And ugh, crap, I wish I hadn't filled in that area with the hand because now it looks like really bad. But whatever, it's fine. I can survive, right? It's fine. It's not the apocalypse. This is the nice thing about being an artist. You don't have to worry about like, you know, people's lives <laughs> in your hands. I don't know how people work in medicine. I mean, it just must be so stressful all the time. Um, okay. I need to, oh, this arm, not dark enough. Okay, see how the arm is almost like a different color than the body? Okay, so I gotta really show that difference. 
So does everybody see what I did is I said, how dark is this arm compared to this? And between the two, this one's darker. That's how you know how dark to make something. It's not just approximate the tone. Like I see a lot of people, they do these like color matching paintings where it's like you match each color. But the thing is that's not taking under consideration the relationships. And that matters more than anything else. It's the relationships of the colors. It's the relationships of the tones. That's what you guys want to be considering. Okay, I got to work on this edge because what separates this figure and this figure is very important. This figure has a darker kneecap. So I'm going to blend that in so that this figure is visibly separate from the other one. But then look at this, then this figure <laughs> gets darker here. Okay. So that, that's a flip because this is lighter, this is darker, this is lighter, this is darker. That's really confusing <laughs> and really hard. And same thing here, Th this is the darker shape. It's a constant comparison, guys. This is not shape by shape. It's not color by numbers. It's how dark is this compared to this? That's how you're gonna figure out all of these things. Okay, I do wanna give a little bit more attention to the face because I don't feel great about where the face is. Granted, it is covered in hair, so that's giving me a little bit of an excuse, but not much. Okay, and okay, I only got nine minutes left. We, we gotta really, I really wanna do the stomach. Okay, let, let's just, let's just really focus on the stomach because I love that form. I think it's so beautiful and I really want to give it a little bit more depth than it has right now. So this, this thigh, does everybody see this? It's got like a almost diagonal motion to it. So that's what I'm gonna do with the crown is sort of push the motion of that going that way. So that there's almost like a tension of the thigh going in that direction. Because I think I made it a little bit too even and I wanna show more of that tension in that area. So this is where like you just spend a lot of time evening things out. Okay, let's get the belly button. This is gonna be fun. This is where you get to do all the fun stuff <laughs> that you've been putting off. You're like, oh, it's not time for that. I'll get to that later. Now we're starting to put in the stuff that we always say, don't do that part, it's too soon. Well, now it's time. <laughs> okay, this should be, oh, I need a big dark line here, okay. All right, all right. This has to come in and get darker like this. Again, you're looking at shapes in relation to other shapes. This is too harsh. Everybody see how harsh this outline is? I'm gonna soften that pretty significantly so that the transition is a lot less dramatic. And that, that's what you're doing. You're identifying those edges and those transitions. Okay, so you can see that stomach is already starting to feel like it has a little bit more form, but I want to make these transitions less abrupt. I want to make them softer, more gelatinous, for lack of a better word. And I got to look at this spot here. Uh, it's a little bit too tight. I'm going to make that a little softer. And here, there's like a slight indentation where it just gets a little bit darker. And I think that shows like the sag of the stomach. So let's see if we can get that sag in there because that's pretty important for the figure. Okay, so here's the sag coming down and a little bit more up here as well. So it's like, this is like a shadow in the shadow. That's what you're looking at. And that's why I'm always getting you guys on that like rug of tone because the rug of tone gets you started, but then within that rug of tone, you pull out some other areas. Okay, I'm gonna squint a little. And when I squint, this breast should be much darker. So I'm gonna go in and make this darker in comparison to this breast. This breast really should be pretty bright by comparison. Let me just fix up some of these edges like this and then yeah, I'm just sort of fixing a couple of the marks. Maybe this one could go a little bit more in that direction because I want to show the way the skin moves. 
because with a larger figure, that's what I think is really exciting is seeing the way the form changes and moves on a thinner person. You're not going to see that because the form is not there. Okay, let's bulk up. I guess, oh, 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 here, here, here. Okay, you know what it is? You have to look at the breast as a separate form as the upper part of the chest. So I'm going to darken this whole area here like that. And doing that is going to let this breast come down a lot more. Okay, let's see if that does it. Uh, yeah, that's a little, I think it's a little too abrupt. So let's make that a little bit darker. And again, you don't have to be so faithful to the photographic reference. Like I definitely am not following Laura Aguilar's photo piece by piece. It, it's a loose reference. And I think that's the way you think about a photo. It's not about copying it. It's not about doing a Xerox version in a drawing. It, it's about raw materials. You got to look at the drawing as raw materials. This is like the egg you crack. This is the flour you add in. I mean, I'm just not into those Pillsbury, you know, cut them up, stick them in the oven. It just doesn't taste as good. Because when you make your own croissants, oh man, it's a different world when you've made your own croissants. Okay. I think I got to bulk up down here. Oh shoot, I only have four minutes left. I promise this is not going to be a mess. <laughs> okay. I just want to, so I think in the very end of the drawing, if you know you only have a little bit of time left, the way I would use that time is jumping around and not staying too long in one area. So I'm going to step back and I'm actually going to like draw sort of from a distance so I can see, okay, how does that really work? Um, and down here as well, I'm going to just add a couple of little strokes to show the rockiness of it. And that will help me a lot with the background. Let's see how that goes. And then a couple more strokes on the side. I did not get up here. I really wish, I mean, if I was going to spend more time on this, I probably would have worked this a little bit more. Um, what I do want to show though, is this, where is that? Oh, this has to come down. All right. Maybe I should. Okay, let's just do it. <laughs> we have a few minutes. I want to get this landscape going back here and show this. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that is helping me. I guess, oh, push this up, maybe darken that. So there's a little bit more of a visible landscape. Actually, I need a new crayon. I've totally eaten this one up. Sometimes this is it. It's like, you're like, okay, let's just pull it out. This is the big guns. Ready? Let's do it. Give it more of a landscape feel. And then I lost those branches. So let's put those branches back like this. Okay. Try that. So that may not be exactly what the photo looks like, but it doesn't matter. It's like, you got to react how you react. And if this is your reaction, then fine. Yeah, you know, I got to do this. It's bugging me too much. I got to give this like really dark section here. By the way, does your hand hurt, guys? Because mine does. <laughs> Especially crayon. Crayon does not make it easy for you to lay off your hands. My hands always hurt after a drawing session. That's fine. It means you're doing your work. It means you're reacting and you're making it a physical experience. Drawing should be a physical experience. You don't want to draw all tied up and worried about how things are going to go. You've got to have that willingness to mess around. Even at this stage, I mean, a lot of people probably think I'm crazy for doing such harsh marks towards the end, but it's like, to me, it, it's like that last push. It's like, why not? You're so close to finishing anyway. You might as well just put it out there. Okay. Oops. I think I went too dark here and I sort of got into the leg. Oh, well, let's fix that up a little bit. Okay. And then that lets me define. Yeah. I sort of screwed that up. Oh, well, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> let's try that. Okay, here we go. 
these are the last marks that I want to throw in. Move that around so you guys can see better. Let's just go a little crazy. Okay. Oh, I need these little strokes in here. This is the landscape. The landscape has this like horizontal feeling. See, I probably overdid it, guys. I probably did more than I should, but I would rather do more than I should and screw it up than walk on eggshells. Walking on eggshells is not fun when you're an artist. It's much better to just put it all out there. Oh, I'm so mad that I screwed that up. I should have more thigh there. Oh, well. Uh, definitely need a little more. 10 seconds. Let's do it. All right, that's almost it. All right, that's it, guys. Let me come up here and see what you guys are saying. I will post a picture of this on Instagram later because obviously on YouTube, it doesn't look as good. So we'll get a good photo in there for you guys to take a look at. All right, I'm scrolling up to see what people are talking about. Let's see. 10,000 Crows says, I want her to fill in that upper left shadow so bad. <laughs> cool. And Whitney is saying, I know I can't wait to see the rocks. See, I think what's happening, you guys, is you're seeing the value of that background. And a lot of people just ignore that stuff and you got to put it in there. Yeah, Alice DB is saying, exactly. It's not a copy, it's an interpretation. And Karen says, there's a big contrast for me. These resting women in my background, there's a very loud Spanish party <laughs> that is going on with flamenco music. That's a really odd combination, I would have to say. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else are people saying? Thank you for the super chat, 10,000 Crows. We really appreciate your support, you guys. Jacqueline saying, I love your work. I didn't follow it with pastel, but I did do a single line drawing, which I'm really happy with. Beautiful reference, fantastic. Yeah, you guys should draw with whatever you wanna draw with. You don't have to use what I use. I am gonna to try to show you as many different materials as possible, but with a figure composition that we're doing right now, the crayon really helps me maintain control because I suppose I could use charcoal, but charcoal is really messy and I feel like for such a complicated composition, it really helps me a lot more to do that. <laughs> Angelic Enigma says, oi, my shoulders hurt. And Jade Leaf says, this is the most fun nervous breakdown I've had. <laughs> you guys are so dramatic. Oh my God. It's like everything with an artist, it's the apocalypse. I mean, yeah, that's why I never get tired of teaching art because it's so apocalyptic most of the time which is really, really funny. So <laughs> I love it. You guys are so great. Well, you guys join me in the discord. I can probably stay on for a little bit, but I gotta, you know, go live a life <laughs> at some point, but I'll go into the discord and subscribe to our channel, join the art prof family. And Karen is saying, are teaching artists nervous about you moving away? Will you replace them? Which you want? Of course not. They're awesome. Never. <laughs> um, they're still going to be around. I mean, they're remote. And so actually for me, moving to Utah is not a big difference. I mean, I don't think they're nervous. I think it's a transition for sure, but we've been together long enough that I think we trust each other. So that's so precious to me. Thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. Thank you for all of you guys in the chat for all your comments. Join me in the Discord for a few minutes. Show me what you guys drew. I'm really excited to see it. Have a good day, you guys.